Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 13 of Unbothered by Ty Rivera. As always, coming to you from high atop Ty Rivera Studios, a.k.a. Casa de Bijou. Um, this is my first sober, completely sober, Unbothered by Ty Rivera. I'm doing it solo because I just had Carmen Morales over, who you guys met on episodes 1 and 11, I believe. I love Carmen Morales. We were having a chat, but I think we got into st some stuff that might end up negatively affecting maybe some of the stuff she has going. And Carmen, if you don't know, is upwardly mobile and making stuff happen, to happen for herself here in L.A. So uh, really, she didn't say anything bad, but just as sensitive as people are. I didn't want to take a chance with somebody else's career that way. And the other thing is, this is episode 13, which some people think 13 is an unlucky number. So I didn't want to make episode 13 the episode where we stall out Carmen's career for a while. So, uh, as always, you can check her stuff out, though. At the Funny Carmen is how you find her on Twitter and Instagram. And then CarmenMorales.com is her website so you guys can check out carmen there like i said we, we, she didn't say anything that i would consider wrong but lately you know you just say the wrong thing and it's weird because it's the la comics that are doing it or not the la com it's comics in general that are doing it lately but they'll try to make this huge deal over what i consider to be nothing and i just didn't want to end up in one of those situations uh, we just wrapped on 9-11, which I guess that's not the most sensitive way to say it, but we did just wrap on 9-11. This is being done early the morning of the 14th. And uh, sometimes people think I'm insensitive when it comes to 9-11. I don't think I am, and it's not something I'm really going to put a lot of thought to. I'll just explain myself really briefly, which I've explained on another episode, but maybe this will drive it home a little better for some people. I was raised to believe that when you die, you go to heaven. So to me, dying isn't necessarily a terrible thing. As far as I'm concerned, God got 3,000 new angels when 9-11 happened, and we also, here on Earth, got 3,000 American heroes at that point. So, uh, I'll joke on 9-11. Uh, my sister died on Halloween, well, between Halloween night and the 1st of November, and I don't ask people to suddenly be somber on Halloween because it's a day for me that has some significance and so I'm not going to do that for other people just because it's 9-11 and you've decided that I'm supposed to be sad on this day or whatever it is you've decided it's just not going to happen as far as I go so if that bothers you maybe you need to find another podcast to listen to maybe you need to find another comic that you like or I don't care what you do I'm just not going to pretend like I care a lot about things that to me aren't terrible things so um, I just put that out there. You know, 9-11 was also the day, this 9-11, 2016, was also the day that Alexis Arquette died. I don't really think that got enough press. And even within the gay community, I don't think it got as much press as it should have. If you're not familiar with the Alexis Arquette, she is from the Arquette family. Uh, you know, Patricia, Rosanna, and David Arquette. I think would be the most famous from that family. And Alexis did some reality TV st stuff. Um, she was also trans, but as far as I read, surg uh, not surgically trans at any point. She hadn't done anything to her to alter herself, uh, but she was trans as far as state of mind. Um, and then at another point, she went on to be um gender specific gender suspicious i believe is the way that she phrased it and um that was her own way of identifying you know not a man not a woman just let people wonder what she is and i always liked alexis arquette a lot of you uh probably know her as the boy george lookalike from uh 
the wedding singer that always saying, "Do you want to? Do you really want to hurt me?" Uh, that was Alexis Arquette, and she was just had a great sense of humor about herself and understood that sometimes people have questions or things aren't just don't fit into a nice little box that you can check. And I really think that the gay community or the LGBT community specifically should have celebrated her life a little bit more. Um, I think she got it, though, all the way around, because I was reading an article about her, and at the moment when she passed, uh, her family cheered as per her instructions, and she looked at that as her transitioning from one, one world to the, to the next. And uh, I think that's a great way to look at it. That's the way I feel. Like, when I die, I want everybody to be happy and party. Um, hopefully, I'll have made it by the time I die so I can have arrangements so there's an open bar and everybody can party. But I just don't see death the way this, that a lot of people do. And people could say, like, you know, well, what if I said something about your sister you know, on the day of her death, like, what if I made a joke, or I'd be like, well, if it was funny, I would laugh, if it's not, then I won't, and that's where I'm at with it, I don't expect everybody to take on my feelings about that, like, I'm just not that kind of person, but there's always something for anybody to get mad about, or not like you for, um, I know some people, we're a little bit upset about um, a Facebook post that I put up the other day. And I don't really know why people were so upset or not upset. It was just like people hitting me up and acting like it was so, might be somewhat out of character for me. But it's like, do you not know me? Like, what do you mean out of character? Or why would I care about that stuff? I posted this uh, status update. And the status update was about two people, two comics that a lot of people know. And one I consider an actual comic. The other one, I'm being generous when I use the term comic. But I'll tell you guys what it was that got some people thinking that maybe I was being a little mean or whatever. Uh, I did a post where I said specifically... If you're part of a couple and close to being homeless, maybe you both ain't shit. Guess being a do-gooder isn't very profitable. Profitable. Maybe when you're living in the streets, you can educate the other homeless people on feminism and Black Lives Matters. Well, that, for anybody that knows me and knows the L.A. comedy scene, uh, most people assumed it was about Ed Greer and Clee Wiggins. They're a couple. And to tell you the truth, it was about them. And I don't mind explaining why I said it. And I don't mind explaining why I feel that way. And if anybody has anything to say about it, they can text me or they can talk to me in person the next time they see me or they can ignore me or they can unfriend me on Facebook and block me or whatever you decide to do. Handle it according, accordingly. Do, do what you feel you need to do. I can't tell you what your heart what your heart feels about these things. Here's the deal. Ed Greer, we've been friends on and off for a couple years now. I will tell you that I don't believe in the idea of frenemies. I don't believe in hanging out with people that I don't like. I either like you or I don't. If I like you, we hang out, we're cool. If I don't, then I just don't talk to you. I don't mess with you. That's the way I am. So uh, there was a point when I was friends with Ed a while back. Um, Ed had always been very complimentary to me at a point I realized that he was harboring some feelings about me that I didn't know he had that got on my nerves. I let him know that decided not to be friends with him anymore. And then we weren't friends for like two years. Then not too long ago, maybe a year and a half, two years ago, I hit him up. I sent him a message just saying like, you know, I'd rather let old shit die than hold on to it. If you're cool with it, let's be friendly. No need to talk about anything, whatever. <clears throat> so we became friends again. More recently, uh, I got into it with Ed's girlfriend, Clee, when, uh, with the Leslie Jones situation. Now, the problem I had with Clee wasn't the stance that she took on the Leslie Jones situation. 
It's just she lied a couple of times. And, like, she has not been factual in the way she's presented a couple of things. It wasn't just that. There was also a situation with another comic named Amy Miller where uh, Clee represented that situation as something other than what it was. And I just, I don't like people who don't care about facts. Like, if you're going to argue facts with me, then let's argue facts. If we're just talking opinions, then that's fine. Then your opinion is your opinion, my opinion is my opinion. But when you start introducing facts and telling me that you saw things with your own eyes, and then I find out, well, not I find out, I'm like, well, I don't know how you saw that with your own eyes when it didn't happen. And then instead of just owning up to the fact that maybe you weren't being the most truthful or maybe you just wanted to win the argument so you got a bit overzealous and said a little bit of a mistruth, instead you try to turn it into a bigger situation and make it seem like something it's not. I don't respect you right off the bat when you do that. So that happened with Clee during our conversation or our Facebook exchange. It turned into a big, a big thing with uh, Leslie Jones and then um, I still couldn't respect Clee for it, though, because I was just like, well, you only did that because I had caught you in a lie. Like, that's the only reason that you did that. And I had you against the ropes as far as arguing went. So you decided to tap somebody else in. So that's fine. But I don't respect it. So since I've known Ed longer and I'm friends with Ed and they're a couple and ladies, I think you are the only ones that I need to tell this to because... I don't know if every, well, I know it's very common for me to, like, if I'm having a problem with a friend's girlfriend or partner, because sometimes it's a gay man as well, uh, then I'll hit up the one that I'm friends with and I'll be like, hey, I'm still cool with you, but I'm not really feeling what your partner was doing. So I sent Ed one of these messages where I, I sent him a text just saying, like, you know, it was a couple of days after the Leslie Jones situation, and it was really bothering me the way Clee handled the whole the whole thing. And so I sent Ed a text message saying, like, uh, I don't, I, we're still friends, but I don't really like the way your girl handled this situation, and I'm having trouble really finding a way to respect her. I don't remember how I phrased it. I could find it if I want to, but... Anyway, that was the general tone. So he sent me back this message that was like talking about how he doesn't know how he even got involved in this stupidity and it says something about Milo Yiannopoulos and Donald Trump. And like it's a bunch of stuff that it's like, OK, I felt that way openly. I've been talking about Black Lives Matter, Donald Trump, Milo Yiannopoulos, all of this stuff I talk about openly. And so I've talked about him with the or talked with him about these things about about the way I feel about these things and stuff like that in person. Like I see him at the very least, at the very minimum, every Monday. I usually see Ed Greer. So if you had a problem with all of these things or me supporting these things or paying attention to these things or the way that I present these things, then you could have said that in person a long time ago, not held on to it. And then when your girlfriend says something stupid, instead of just being cool about the fact that your girlfriend was acting stupid, instead you make it about all these other things that weren't an issue until just right then as far as I go. But knowing the way... <clears throat> the way last time Ed had been harboring, uh, then I was just like, oh, okay, well, um, then I guess you're harboring again. But I tried to be cool about it. I just can't hang out with fake people. I can't hang out with people that say one thing but feel another way. I say exactly the way I feel. If I like you, I like you. If I don't like you, I don't like you. That's where it's at. I don't mind telling you either way or I don't mind treating you accordingly. But instead... It, Ed says that, and then I talked to him in person, and he's still kind of deflecting, so it's like, okay, well, now I still feel like that's unresolved because we really haven't talked about it, and if we're supposed to be friends, then we should come to some sort of resolution on this. Uh, but I was still willing to somewhat leave it alone. Then not too long ago, there was another, well, there have been a couple of threads where I've been brought up and Clee has come in as like special witness on these threads. 
and suddenly starts telling people about like what my mental state might be or why I might behave the way I do or say the things I do. Well, let's all remember that I'm not murdering anybody here. I just have a couple ideas that aren't popular with people. It's not like I've done anything terrible. I just don't agree with everybody on everything. So let's start there. Uh, and then let's take it to Clee barely knows me. Clee knows me through Ed. Like, really, that's the way I know Clee is as Ed's girlfriend. Like, Clee may think of me as Ty Rivera. I think of Clee more as Ed's girlfriend. So to have somebody that doesn't even know you commenting about you and have all these opinions about you, it's just like, what's the matter with your life that you're talking about me all the time? What's the matter with your life that you have so many opinions on me? And... I can tell you exactly what's the matter with your life if you're getting evicted. You need to handle that eviction. You need to worry about that instead of talking about me on Facebook. Because as far as I know, nobody's paying you to give these opinions about me on Facebook. That's just something you're doing in your own spare time. So instead of doing that, how about you jump on Monster or any of the sites that you need to be on to maybe get a job or maybe even better, how about you actually hit the street Start filling out some old school applications. Make sure your ass isn't in the fucking... Sorry. <laughs> but if you're going to the homeless shelter or you don't know where you're going to go next or you don't have a place, maybe you shouldn't spend your days talking about me on Facebook. And maybe at some point you have to realize that as a human, I'm going to get tired of that. Anybody would get tired of that. Who wouldn't get tired of people talking shit about them, especially when you're hanging out with one of the or you're dating somebody that's supposed to be my friend that I talk to regularly? Maybe at a point I feel like your boyfriend should talk to you and be like, hey, I know you may not like him or you may not agree with a lot of what he says, but this guy is my friend. Why don't you try not talking about him on social media? You know, if I were anybody else, a lot of this stuff would be considered bullying. Like the, the way that people treat me, the, uh, it's, and I'm not do, going on a feel sorry for me because I know I'm a strong personality and nobody would feel sorry for me e anyway. I don't feel sorry for myself when these kinds of things happen, but it does get on my nerves a little bit when people talk about me like they know me, but they have no idea who I am in some cases. At least Clee knows who, who I am. There are people online that tell people stories about what a terrible person I am, and they've never actually met me in life. They just read a couple Facebook statuses and now they feel like they're the expert on me. Or they'll start telling people that they actually do know me, which is like, I know who, who I know and who I don't know. Like, there's this woman that I saw tonight at uh, an open mic, or it's technically a show, um, and this woman says that we had a problem of some sort. And it's like, I've never met you. And then I looked at her tonight and I was like, yeah, I've never seen this bitch before. I don't know who this person is. Why does this person talk about me? Like, not only do they know me, but we've had some sort of problem. And they try to get help over it, like have other people have their back and be mad at me too. But it's like, how fucking crazy are you? that you're making up stories about other people and making it seem like you have a history with them. Like, to me, that's what's mentally about. Not me talking shit about 9-11 or not agreeing with third-wave feminism or not agreeing with Black Lives Matter. All of that is an opinion. I mean, like, I feel differently about some of these things than other people do, and those are opinions. But when you're actually lying about me and making it seem like you know me when we've never met, to me, that's true mental instability. Those are the people that need to get checked out, not me for having some different opinions. It's like, how about you stop making up stories in your head and presenting them as reality to other people? I'll tell you who I do, did have a problem with this week, though. And that's this guy named Jim Diggity or Degotti. I'm not sure how you say his last name. It doesn't matter anyway. It's never going to affect anything. But anyway, this loser, I'll tell you what got on my nerves about him. The thing with Jim is I don't even know him. I hang out with Kenny Lyon. Jim has been hanging out with Kenny Lyon for a long time. I accept that's one of Kenny's friends. No problem there. Uh, the thing that got me, though, was this guy, Jem, goes up and 
does a set at the Lexington. It's Sunday night at the Lexington. There's not a lot of people there, but it's a fun situation. And uh, we have two actual audience members. Jim gets on stage and starts talking about Kenny Lyon and how Kenny Lyon has no game and he's talking to these girls. And it's just something I've noticed with Jim, even though I'm not particularly sensitive to it, just because Kenny Lyon is a grown man. And anybody that knows me knows that I like Kenny Lyon. I had him on the podcast a couple episodes ago. I really do like Kenny Lyon. But I wasn't feeling particularly sensitive, even though I've noticed that Jim is always writing Kenny Lyon about something, like always trying to make it seem like, if you ask me, these people present themselves as as helping you, but really what they're trying to do is tear you down. So I notice a lot of Jim trying to tear Kenny down, which is cool if that's what you want to do. And if Kenny wants to put up with it, Kenny's a grown man. So he's welcome to put up with it if he wants to. But Jim goes on stage and is doing nothing but talking about how Kenny has no game. And there's two attractive women in the audience. That's all we have is like the two ladies. And they were great. Um, I can't remember their names right now, but they were Fab and Joanna. That's what it was. Fab and Joanna. And they were two really nice girls. Other than that, we had the other comics and not... Oh, yeah, there was a couple other audience members sitting at the bar, but like sitting in where the audience seat, the audience area uh, where the seats are, there were just the two girls. So Jim's going doing his best to like let these girls know how little game Kenny has. And Jim's acting like he's just some kind of fucking pussy magnet or something. Going on and on about, you know, Kenny, but it's not funny. None of it's funny. It's not like, you know, good roasting even. It's just like some man that doesn't get enough people listening to him in regular life so he feels like he has to have a microphone and present himself as a comic because that's another thing people have to know about me i'm going to be very clear about this from here on out with people not that i haven't been so far but there are certain people that i consider to just hang out and they're not actually comics and i can only deal with those people for so long or humor them for so long so Jim does this terrible set, and I'm completely content to not say anything. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Was completely content to abide by that. Then I'm outside, and I'm just hanging out. I've got a couple comics to go before I'm up, and I had requested to go absolutely last at that particular particular mic. It was my last mic of the night, and I had done, I think, three other spots that night so I was pretty good to just go up last so while I'm waiting to go on Jim walks to the back where I am and he's asked he asked me how his set is like I said I have nothing nice to say about his set because it just wasn't funny that's the main reason it just wasn't funny at all so I'm cool to just keep my thoughts to myself So then he asked me again, and I just stay quiet again. And then he's like, are you ignoring me? I mean, Ty, are you ignoring me? So I still just stay quiet. Then I hear Kenny Lyon tell Jim, just leave him alone. He doesn't feel like talking right now, which was true. I didn't feel like talking, especially about your shitty set. I just don't want to talk about your shitty set. Sorry. But he asked me again, and then he's like, did I do that bad that you won't even talk to me? Shut up. Anyway. So I'm still being cool, like completely not saying anything. Then he asked me again, and in my head, I'm like, okay, if he really wants my opinion, I'll give it to him, but I'm not going to give it to him until I'm on stage. So I get on stage, do a couple of jokes, and then call him in because he's in the back, and then he doesn't want to come in. So then he starts yelling at me. In a not comic sort of way. And I don't care. Like, you can raise your voice if you want to. I'm not intimidated. I'm not scared. I don't think of you as an issue in any way. Um, So, feel free to yell. But I'm just going to continue roasting you. And so, I was getting laughs off of talking shit about him a little bit. And then going into the material that I was working working on. And then a couple of times he tried to come in and yell, and then I had to shut him down again and really just made him look like a fool. I don't know if he even realizes it because he walked outside for part of it, but 
anybody that heard knows he just got his ass handed to him. Like, that's all it was. And if he had been a real comic, he would have come in and maybe gone back and forth with me a little bit and we would have had some fun and that would have been the end of it. But because he's not a real comic, he doesn't know how to handle that. So instead, he starts yelling and getting mad and bring up plastic surgery, which is fine with me because I have no issue about that. Like, that's what people don't get. Like, I guess maybe that seems like good put downs to the other moms at PTA or something. But for me, it's just so just a fact of life. It's like I've had plastic surgery. So why would I get like that's like if somebody were to call me Mexican. I mean, like I'm Mexican. So why would I get offended about that or see that as any kind of put down? I don't care. It's like one one time a guy called me a faggot in traffic and I wasn't at all bothered by that. It's like, yeah, I am a faggot. So, I mean, why should I care about any of these things, you know? But, I mean, if he had put put a punchline at the end of it, then that would have been really nice because then at least, you know, it's a joke, whatever, you know, like you're being a comic. But instead, you're just trying to get soccer mom angry with me, which, again, you're welcome to do that because... The thing was, I already knew you weren't a comic, and all that did was confirm it for me. So then I get off stage, and he was like, "From when I was off stage, she also was like, um, from now on, I will not be nice to you, Ty. I don't fucking need you to be nice to me. Actually, I prefer you not even be around. I don't know why you are around, because really, you're not a comic. So I don't know why these people want to waste time pretending to be stand-ups and then they get mad when actual stand-ups don't want to put up with their shit and it's really like just mind your own business you know like if you had never asked me about your set then I wouldn't have said anything like even though you were talking shit about Kenny and being kind of a dick to him or maybe trying to make him feel not so good about himself or whatever your intention was that you pretend like oh I'm just being a friend no you're not you're being a fucking piece of shit just Mind your business all the way around where I'm concerned is is the way I feel about all these people. You know, like, I was talking a little bit about Ed and Clee earlier, telling you guys that story. Like, that's what really got on my nerves when they're just talking about me. And it's like, you're not, you don't even have a place to live, but you're still talking about me on Facebook. I don't know. Maybe get a job and pay your fucking rent but then really i don't care how you spend the time when you're getting evicted i mean figure it out i guess you have you need something else to occupy your mind so you're welcome but yeah so that happened with jem and i don't think jem or a lot of people ed and cleave and like get that i have fun with social media like i said last week like for me it's like words with friends or whatever it's fun to just bag on people or whatever roast them a little bit or vent but i'm not taking social media nearly as seriously as a lot of these people are like these people seem to be developing actual feelings about things that are happening on social media like with me like I don't want to turn into a person that I don't like because of social media, which I can have fun with people and stuff. But once it gets to lying, it's like now I don't respect you. And that's what happened with Clee. It's like just not respecting her for that, you know, like because she tries to make things something that they're not. And then when it comes to Ed, Like I said, I liked him, and I thought we would just, like, I don't expect you to talk shit about your girlfriend. Like, most of my friends don't do that, but they'll just be like, yeah, I know. Sometimes it's like that. Like, one time Ed told me about, you know, him having to go to Clee and let her know, like, stop getting into arguments on Facebook about some indefensible shit that, you know, you can do that with me because we're in an actual relationship, but don't do that with the outside world because then people are actually going to call on you to defend these ideas or to actually be able to back them up. But I think even though Cleve presents herself as a smart person, she's really 90% emotion and thinks that that's supposed to just carry her through. I don't know what these people think. I guess I shouldn't get into their thinking because 
Well, most of these people would never understand the way I think anyway because they're so busy trying to be fake and act like they like people that they don't like and care about things that they don't really care about. And it's just this big circle jerk of people acting like they care about shit they don't care about. Like when it came to 9-11 when I was talking about that, how many people really have a connection with 9-11? How many people really can say that that meant something to them? Or is that something that TV just tells you every year you're supposed to care about? And, oh my God, I'm so sad now. Fuck off. You're so fake. Not only now, but always. Just, I swear. And then people get mad at me about that, too. Like, I wouldn't care if all these people killed themselves. Like, they could fucking commit mass suicide, and I'd be even happier. I'd be like, good, some fucking breathing room on these open mic lists. Now we have a few less people fucking up Facebook and making fools of themselves at open mic. Like, Clee, I've never even heard her be funny, and I've seen her go up a couple of times and just never heard her be funny. And Ed, Ed Greer is all right, but, like, he may, mistakes himself for being funnier than he is. Like, he's just all right. That's all it is. And I'll hear him talk all the time. I destroyed it. I killed it. It's like, I was in the room. You did okay. You had a respectable set. I don't even know if these people know what kill or destroy means. It's like, Jesus Christ, these just okay sets. And the, I blame the comedy scene in general, what's been happening, you know? Because, like, L.A. comedy has turned into a bunch of just clever people. Not funny, clever. So people think that more than a chuckle means that you're fucking destroying. And that's not even all of L.A. comedy, because I've mentioned this a couple times before. But as far as open mics go, there are some real killers on the open mic scene in LA there are some people that are absolutely hilarious and they're just not getting the shine that they should get right now but I get the feeling that that's gonna come to an end because people are tired of being duped by bad comedy you know like think about comedy central half hours and hours like you don't even know who's doing them anymore even the people on the scene don't know who's doing them anymore. It's like, who's picking these people? Are you picking them solely based on who they're represented by and not their actual comedy? Because you would figure that Comedy Central would have been able to turn out a few stars by now. I mean, everything just seems terrible. And then you watch Conan. I mentioned that not too long ago. Conan is absolutely horrible. It's like, how many comics do I have to watch eat shit on Conan before Conan realizes that he either needs a new booker or his booker needs to stop going to the same shitty spots to find his comics. Like, that's something that really needs to happen because I see all, like, people will post, so-and-so destroyed on Conan. Watch my friend so-and-so kill it on Conan. And I'll click, expecting to see somebody kill it, and I'll be like, this motherfucker is eating shit just like he does everywhere in real life. Like, I don't know why he even wanted this televised. I wouldn't want my friends to see me eating shit like that. I wouldn't be sharing that. And I certainly wouldn't call you a friend if you were sharing me eating shit on fucking Conan. I mean, how desperate are people to be on fucking TV? I don't know if you've realized. But you can just do something and put yourself on YouTube and feel like you're on TV if you want to. You don't have to go through all the ex extra steps of embarrassing yourself in, the whole, in front of the whole fucking country. Then the entire L.A. comedy scene watching it, too? Get a hold of yourself. Why would you want people to see these things? But to each his own. I guess some of these people like eating shit, and you know. At the end of the day, I couldn't understand a lot of these people anyway, because my parents actually love me, so... That's the other thing. Like, I hear people complain all the time when they're on open mics, and they're like, this is terrible, I hate this. Of course you hate it, you're not good at it. I would hate it, too, if I just ate shit everywhere. It's not the audience. It's the fact that you're not funny. Stop blaming the audience because you're not funny. Are you mad at the audience because they didn't come to just laugh at absolutely anything? Are you mad at the audience because they actually expect you to have jokes? Is that what you're mad about? Like what? And if you don't like doing it, then don't fucking do it. You're not being paid to be at open mics. None of us are. We're all there because we want to be. The difference is I'm there to work on material and the people I know are actually there to work on material. The people that complain all the time, they're not there to work on material. They're there because they think that 
stand up comedy is some kind of get rich quick scheme, which if you know the way that comedy works and the lifespan of like a comic's career and even the way a comic's career goes in a lot of cases, you're stupid because it's definitely not a get rich quick situation. It's not I mean, every once in a while you have the people that just take off out of nowhere and that's great for them. But there's not a lot of that in comedy. Comedy is a lot of waiting and you do a couple things and then you wait for a little bit longer and then you do a couple things and uh, hopefully along the way you're starting to make better money and but it's a it's a real struggle doing stand up so I don't know why these people come in and think oh I'm just going to do a couple open mics and then I'm going to be a superstar it's like you're not even funny yet but you're suddenly going to be a superstar. That's the other thing. The thing that bothers me with the PC comics, like when comics are overly worried about what words people say and don't misgender anybody and don't say this because it might be construed as homophobic or transphobic or like all the stuff they say. It's like, you're not even funny. I don't even know why you think you can be taking words, ideas and concepts away from not only me, but yourself. I mean, Maybe you should try to make some of the th these things funny because the shit you're working on isn't hitting a nerve with anybody, isn't making anybody laugh at anything. It's just you're a series of basic bitch statements, and I'm supposed to act like you're doing something groundbreaking? You're not. I guess that's what you do, though, when you can't make friends the regular way. I guess that's what you do when you work in an office all day and... Really, nobody would even know you were there if you didn't have to answer the phone or whatever your crappy job is. I just don't get it. And maybe I am not meant to get it. Maybe I just need to continue to work on me and what I'm doing. I did five sets on Sunday. I did five sets on Monday. I don't know where I'm going to end up this at the end of this week. Um, but I'm just trying to do as many sets as I possibly can do between now and the next time I go on the road, which is the end of October. I am looking forward to it, but at the same time, it's a lot of work making sure I have material tightened up that I want to do and there's certain jokes that I want to completely get rid of in my act and... It's just because I'm bored with them. I've done them for a couple of years, and, and it's not really. I guess these are all just problems only comics would get, maybe, or maybe other people get it. I don't know. On that note, though, I should mention that I appreciate all the people, comics and non-comics, that hit me up telling me that they enjoy the podcast or they've been listening or... Uh, they like it, even though they know that I'm still figuring everything out. I, like I said, I was going to have Carmen help me out again tonight, but I ended up deleting that because I just feel like it could have been a situation where she got in some trouble um, over something she didn't even realize that people would be sensitive to. And I don't mind if you want to come on my podcast and fuck your career up or give me your unpopular opinions that I don't mind at all but if a person's just chatting with me and they say something in the wrong way or in a way that people could misconstrue and try to make life hard for them then I just don't want to be a part of that I don't want to be the reason that that got out there but I think I gave you guys a pretty good bitch fest right now like you definitely know how I feel about Ed and Clee you definitely know how I feel about Jem. Because Jem tried to talk to me afterwards. Because, of course, he's yelling at me while I'm on stage. Then I get off stage and he acts like we're both part of an act. And he's like, oh, my God, that was so hilarious. We did so good. And he's like, gives me a hug. Which I'm not going to be a dick, you know. Like, I let him hug me. Um, and then he walks up to me a few minutes later and he was like, because I had said that, you know, he looks like he couldn't get girls anyway. Because he always looks like he dr just rolled out of bed. You know, and that's not a clown, just if you are ever to meet this guy, or for those of you that are listening that know him, you know I'm not lying, I'm not 
slandering this man. He just always looks like he rolled out of bed. Literally, he's wearing pajama pants every time I see him and a sloppy T-shirt. And it looks like he just threw on slippers or whatever he's wearing for shoes and came out. And he brings his dog out with him, which is an emotional support animal, but not well behaved enough to really be an emotional support animal or any kind of animal that should like he's a good dog he's not bad but it just you know there's dogs that are better trained for being at home and there's dogs that are better trained for being out and if you're gonna have your home dog out in public then you should at least be a good dog owner and make sure you're with them all the time instead Jem will let anybody hold on to this dog's leash so that he can go to the back and do whatever he's doing. I just, you know, just all the way around, you're in the way. Like, just stop being in the way. And if you're going to be around, you know, where comics are working or trying to work stuff out, the least you can do is just not make your fucking self a pain in the ass. That's what you can do. So... I don't have to deal with you. Don't ask me about your shitty set, especially when you know that you didn't do well. Like, what do you want me to do? Am I supposed to be polite and lie to you and tell you that I thought it was funny? Because I didn't think it was funny. I thought it was lame. I thought it was boring. I think you're boring. I think everything about you is boring. So you want me to do what? Humor you? Then you threaten me and tell me you're not going to be nice to me anymore? Like, be nice to me how? Like, you're not going to give me weed? Because everybody gives me weed. I mean, like... That's just the way my life works. I mean, like, if everything were as easy as me getting weed, I swear I'd be a fucking billionaire already. It's just not something I concern myself with. I mean, outside of that, it's not like I'm looking for people just to be nice to me. I don't know if you guys have seen me or met me in person, but trust me, I'm not just looking for people to be nice to me. Oh, please, somebody talk to me. Come over here and say hi. I don't know if people realize, but... My life's actually really great in that way. Like, a lot of people talk to me. A lot of people are nice to me. And I'm nice back because I genuinely like these people. But as far as if people don't like me, you're welcome to that. Just don't try to make it my fucking problem. Anyway, this has just been one bitch fest. And maybe I'll be a little more positive next time or maybe I won't who knows I make no promises I just promise to always be Ty Rivera and I promise to always be unbothered thank you for listening to unbothered by Ty Rivera everybody I am at America's Favorite Fag.com. That's where you can find me. Or you can find me at almost any open mic in Los Angeles for at least the next month. So thank you everybody for listening. This is Unbothered by Ty Rivera. <laughs>